In this video, we're gonna set up the Apple M1 Mac Mini to do our capturing, encoding, and streaming to Twitch or YouTube for our gaming session, all without a capture card over our local network using OBS and the NDI plugin. So without any further waiting, let's go ahead and take a look at how to get this all set up. First and foremost, this is probably the most important thing. You're gonna to wanna to use a wired connection between your gaming PC and your M1 Mac. And the reason why is that this ethernet cable will help reduce any interference, latency, and any packet loss because it's a much more reliable connection versus something like Wi-Fi. And obviously we're gonna to wanna to connect both of those computers to a router and or switch, so that way they can actually see each other on the network more easily. Now let's take a look at what you need to do in OBS to set up the network capturing and encoding. We're gonna start off by configuring macOS first. And there's three things that you're gonna to need to download in order for this to work. The first is obviously OBS itself. And you can just go to OBS's website and download the installer for macOS. Now your browser should automatically detect that you're using Mac OS and present you with the download installer button here. And then you can basically just download this. The next two things that we're gonna need are a little bit more complicated to find. And I'm gonna leave links in the video description for everything just in case. But in this case, we're gonna to need to download the OBS NDI plugin and the OBS NDI runtime package. So on this page here on GitHub, if we scroll down, we'll see a little section for Mac OS and you're gonna to wanna to download the NDI runtime because it's not installed automatically. So go ahead and click this link to download that. And then you're also gonna wanna download the OBS NDI 4.8 Mac OS package. And once you have both of those downloaded, you should be able to install OBS with both of those plugins, no problem. Now I've already done all this and that's why I didn't click on save, but nonetheless, I'll show you what to expect. If you've done everything right in your downloads directly, you should see uh, a package for OBS, a package for OBS NDI, and a runtime package as well. We're first gonna wanna start off by installing OBS itself. You'll get this little pop-up window and you're just gonna drag OBS over into your applications folder. Now, on my Mac Mini, it installed very quickly and I didn't actually know it was done, uh, but we can simply check by hitting the command key and spacebar at the same time and typing in OBS and we can see that it pops up here, so it's installed, or we can click on applications up here and find OBS. Now, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to install without launching OBS just yet is the NDI package itself. Now, you want to start with the OBS NDI package first before you install the runtime loader. So go ahead and double click on that, hit continue. We're gonna leave all the settings as default. It will ask you to enter in your password. Okay, so packages are installed. You can either keep the package, the installer package, or uh, move it to trash. I'm going to keep it just in case. And also, now we need to install the NDI, NDI runtime package. And the procedure is pretty much identical. We'll hit continue, continue. Yes, we agree to the license. Install. Enter in our password. and it's installed. I'm also gonna keep this package and not delete it. Now we can open up OBS itself. Okay, now that OBS is open, and mind you, I've already installed OBS, so I don't have to go through the first time setup, but we are gonna to wanna to configure things anyway manually. So here in the bottom right, we're gonna click on settings. We're gonna to go to output, and we're gonna make sure that our output mode is selected to advanced because if you are on simple, you actually won't have the full range of options. So we click advanced mode. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we select the Apple VT H.264 hardware encoder because this thing is awesome and does a great job. In this example, we're gonna be streaming to YouTube and YouTube's max bit rate is something like 51,000 kilobits per second. Um, so make sure you go ahead and set the bit rate of that. Our key interval needs to be set to two. Uh, this is, may or may not be important. Uh, I've been setting it to two and things have been working perfectly fine. You can choose a profile of high or baseline. I haven't seen a difference between the two, so I'm just gonna roll out with baseline. We'll hit apply to make sure that these settings stick. And then we're gonna go over to stream and then make sure we get ourselves connected to YouTube. Now, I'm not gonna show you this process. 
uh, but it's actually very simple to just make sure you select you know which service you want to stream to twitch youtube facebook whatever it is and then connect your account so you don't have to enter in your key now for our video canvas we are doing 1920 by 1080 and we are not technically scaling our output uh, to 1920 by 1080 as well. And we're just gonna leave the FPS value to 60. Now finally, the most important part about this is simply clicking the plus sign here, and we're gonna wanna add an NDI source. We'll click OK. Right now, there's nothing showing because our gaming computer is not running. Um, so we're just gonna leave this blank for now and come back to it. Okay, we're gonna head it over to our Windows gaming PC and set this up as well, but it's essentially the same process. You download OBS for Windows, and then you also download the NDI plugin, as well as the Windows installer EXE. Now, the important thing here to remember is that you follow these exact steps here, and make sure that after you run the installer that you actually move the contents into the OBS installation folder. And I'll show you what that looks like. On the Windows side, things are a little bit easier. Obviously, you're gonna wanna install OBS again, uh, by going to OBS's website. And I lied to you a little bit earlier when I said that it, you'd have to download three things. It turns out you actually only download two things, OBS itself and the OBS NDI plugin. Now, before I mentioned that you had to copy the contents of the archive to your OBS Studio installation folder, that's not true. You can actually skip all of this altogether. Um, what you instead need to do is go straight down here and download the OBS 4.8.0 windows installer.exe. And when that is done downloading, you will uh, obviously want to uh, run that and install that. If I, there it is. So we're gonna install this. We're gonna basically next through it. And what's really cool about windows, it actually asks you if you want to install the NDI runtime as well. So this is actually required to have, so you have to install this uh, or else this entire process isn't gonna, isn't gonna work. So make sure that you do check the box for the NDI 4.5.1 runtime. We'll click on next. We'll just hit install and accept. Now uh, we'll install NDI into the default uh, directory, that's fine. Name it that, install, and we're done. So that was pretty simple, I would say. Now, if we launch OBS, um, all we have to do from here is basically get it set up as well. And so this part, I would say, is also pretty simple. So let's go ahead and configure OBS uh, first. So we're gonna we're not gonna set up streaming because we're not gonna do that, but we are gonna want to set up our uh, canvas. So let's make sure that our base canvas is 1920 by 1080. Uh, we also want our output to be 1920 by 1080. We're gonna change our frame rate to 60. I don't know if that actually matters for this, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, click apply to set your settings. And basically we're done here. There's not really anything else you need to do. So we're just gonna hit okay. And now the most important part for this is that you're gonna want to go to tools and click on NDI output settings. And so um, you'll want to hit this checkbox for main output and you can name your output if you want. Um, it's gonna use your computer's host name. So this computer's host name is huge anus, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and name it for fun too. And I'm gonna call it uh, gaming rig and press okay. And so this should now be uh, actually set up and recording. So let's go ahead and add it, or not recording. This is actually set up and streaming to the network right now. So let's go ahead and add uh, display capture. We'll say okay. Uh, so now we are capturing our display. So we have some output here. Now we're gonna switch over to our Mac and see what we see. So back at our Mac, we actually don't see anything just yet. Well, that's okay. We still need to configure our NDI source. So we're gonna click on this gear icon here. We're gonna go to source name. Oh, and huge anus shows up and it's named gaming rig. We're gonna leave the bandwidth the highest because we are using a ethernet based um, connection and we're gonna leave the timing to source timing and that's pretty much all we need to do here. So momentarily 
our gaming computer does show up and that is what we are capturing there. And if we wanted to, we could just immediately start streaming to YouTube because we set that up already. Or in another case, if you wanted, you could just start recording uh, that screen here instead, uh, whatever you really wanna do. It seems kind of complicated, but it's actually pretty simple, um, especially if you just like take your time and go through these steps and the quality is actually very good. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you might be able to expect if you were to use your Apple M1 chip to do your capturing, encoding, and streaming. Man, I, f I got so into this, I forgot I was actually like recording this session. All right, let's go. All right, well, that's basically the gist of that. It was pretty simple, I would say. It's really cool that we can leverage our home network to do all of this without having to purchase any third-party hardware. It's all just local, and you're probably pretty comfortable using Mac OS if you have an Apple M1. Um, mini or macbook or macbook pro or soon to come the imac so it's pretty wicked how just the m1 not even m1 pro max or just it's just the base model m1 with 16 gigs of uh, memory and 512 gigabytes of storage so it's pretty impressive that that thing can do all of that encoding by itself and we don't really need any uber hardware now the mac mini is pretty expensive at about 650 dollars with its base configuration but it packs a pretty big bang for the buck and you also get a full bone desktop experience which is pretty cool as well i think but we're not going to debate whether you know what's better or the best method i think this is just one more tool in your toolkit to uh, stream to youtube or twitch at home uh, if you have the necessary equipment or in their lack of i guess in this case so i think that was pretty cool uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know and I will do my best to answer them. But I want to let you know I am not a streaming expert, so uh, be warned for your questions. All right, I'll see you all soon. Cheers.